characteristic invasion coming out from triangle formation. Are they grouping up together? It looks like a giant ship is kind of keeping an eye on the horizon here, way up in the sky. What a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the things that makes Paragon such a new and refreshing MOBA to the MOBA scene, is it has that Z-axis, man, and we've seen it on display. The strategical depth that it adds to the game is just uh, bewildering and amazing to watch, but they're grouped up here at their own red buff. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be doing the invasion here. Taking a look at early itemization, again, fairly... Uh, they're very familiar itemizations on both sides of the field. Only a person getting health potions is going to be the, the Rampage and the Fen Mal. Everyone else going with those wards on the side of Triangle Formation. Uh, yeah, uh, Gooch, do me a favor. Um, um, we are we are running a little bit ahead for some reason of Chipperl's uh, triple stream. Um, we, we With the stutter, guys, we ended up changing the delay a little bit. Uh, we're about a minute ahead, actually, of his stream right now uh, due to the in-game delay and the the uh, delay on our end. So bear with us just one second as we try and get this uh, figured out real fast. Uh, what's the problem? We are ahead of, of Chip's stream. They are they are behind for some reason. So I'm, if, if anybody's watching Trip's, uh, Ch Chip Roll's stream and ours combined, we are actually about two minutes ahead of them. Uh, okay, so you want to pause the game real quick? Just pause it for just a minute, guys. Bear with us here just a second here. We just go back a minute to like minute and. I just I don't want to affect anybody viewing either game or give any of the teams an, uh, an advantage. All right, well let's do this one time and do it quickly here, guys, so we can get back into the match. Uh, just let me know when go ahead and hit play here. In the meantime, again, we'll take a look at the itemization and talk about it. Uh, my little stick, this is something he's done several times. He gets that flash fire piston, very common. The energy version of that is the Madstone Gym, which actually, uh, beacon, not on Murdoch, because if Murdoch was banned out, it is going to be that twin blast instead, getting that Guardian's Ward. So this gives you a little bit of early game, extra damage, extra attack speed. You still have the health potion. Generally after this, you don't see that flash fire piston, uh, upgraded generally they go into their next item my little stick maybe we we generally see finn Mel's go with something defensive like an offensive maneuvers or that bright steel plate we see frequently or he'll go into a defensive one we've seen him hey, do both type of the builds gooch just jump to 105 in our play so we're, we're we'll be a little bit uh we'll be as close to them as we can 105 so we're gonna watch the uh, same thing all over again here all right here we are unfortunately guys but i don't want to give anybody an advantage here there we go so right, there we are Again, we know they don't invade or anything like that, but at least we'll keep the streaming experience as best we can for our viewers, of course. But yeah, we know there's no invasion. Uh, we'll see what these teams decide to do. I think the invasion comes down to respect here, Notch. I think Triangle I, I Formation agree. knows, and I think they're like, you know what? Do we really want to invade Baylife? I think we should just play conservative and secure our own Red Orb. I 100% agree with that. I think it's... it's they, Like we've said, they've scrimmed, they've played each other before. Um, do they know... Do they have each, you know, each other's number? Probably not, but it's a respect thing. We're yep. going to play it safe. We're going to get our buffs. We're going to just allow them to do theirs. Uh, as you can see, the jungles are pretty well visioned for both teams. Yeah. So we're not going to see, we're not going to see uh, most likely unnecessary kills when these teams start to get in their lanes yep. and, and, and start playing that way. Woo, I thought the stream dropped again. We just finally got source options. I was like, son of a, but we're good, guys. We got that source options online here. So I think, yeah, these teams are just going to go bounce around their jungle, do that typical death ball, get that early game uh, card experience before you fall over to your lanes. And taking a look at the difference in compositions here, we see that Triangle Formation does have themselves, or I'm sorry, Baylife rather has themselves a Gideon. Uh, here we see quite frequently, we talked about that card Shockwave is such an impactful card that uh, the Gideon is able to pick that up as he is an intelligence here and Shockwave is an intelligence affinity. So keep an eye on that. Is he going to go right into it early on? Is it maybe something a little bit delayed or will he forego the Shockwave as a whole? Either way, it's such an important card. If Sir Sadik has it available in his deck, we will see it, I think, at one point or another during this match on that Gideon. Gideon is already a very strong hero. You give him that Shockwave and the impact he is able to bring in team fights is extraordinary. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are going to just see posturing a little bit. We, we do have uh, uh, Isu, My Little Stick, and, and Boaz rotating the map um, as three. Again, pushing out these mini waves. Gideon's playing a little bit safe. Uh, Sir Sadik is on Gideon. Uh, he's playing a little bit safe, making sure he doesn't overextend mid to get to get picked off. Uh, but I think we're just going to see the lane game early on here, guys. We're going to see these guys try and uh, build up card experience. Uh, hopefully pick it, uh, pick up an early kill, but I think for the most part we'll just see them play it safe. Yeah, I think it's going to be similar to the game we saw game number two between Kill on Sight and Baylife, where 
the kills were far and few between. It all came down to just lane control. Uh, there were a couple aggressive pushes on towers and whatnot, but uh, it, it, those, I think those lateral harvesters and the lanes are going to be very important for these teams. If they are deciding both to play conservative, we talked about it, how the control over that harvester is going to be a really big objective in gaining one team or another an advantage when it comes to low action, low kill uh, per early games and even transitioning into the mid games here. Gideon though, when he hits level five though, I wanna say that because they, I feel like with the Gideon on the side of Baylife, I think their early and mid game is just a little bit stronger because the moment he gets that black hole, he can come into team fights, sweep into team fights and just turn the tide of it, especially with a Muriel as well. A Muriel alt on top of a Gideon black hole is a devastating combination that we're definitely gonna see played here. Now, do you like a, um... Do you like an aggressive mural? Are you expecting him to be more of a come in and try and clean up or or use it more defensively to clear out minion waves? I, I love seen it used different ways yeah. so far. I love seeing it with a rampage jumping in and the Muriel jumping in on the rampage as they're at, like the Fen Mal goes in as well. So the Fen Mal and the rampage are uh, next to each other. They both get that shield from the Muriel alt because anyone who's in that ring when Muriel lands gets a shield as well. I really like seeing that. It's it's amazing aggressive potential, especially when you have a Gideon with a shock, potentially a shockwave. That's two knockbacks. One Muriel alt knockback into another knockup on top of a black hole, Rampage going around, Fen Mao disrupting the back line. Uh, that's what I really like seeing there, but it's just a very well-rounded ability. It just depends on the situation and depends on the, the variables of the given situation. But that, I think so when it comes to pushing, I really like seeing that Muriel jump and actually, yeah, right tower actually it took a lot of damage. They almost pushed it down. Yeah, giant. They were able to defend. I mean, it is very, very, very low at this point. But uh, they were able to get the defense. Uh, Ritsu, Selwonk, and, and Chip rotated around. We were able to get that defense against Sir Static. Uh, but Sir Static dealt a lot of damage to that tower. Uh, they're going to have to watch that lane clear very closely. So Giant Ship's pretty much been relegated to the jungle. Uh, he hasn't really roamed that much. We only saw him presence on the map once. I mean, he's uh, level 3 right now, so normally we expect to see Rampages a little bit more well-farmed. Taking a look at Giant Triple's Rampage itemization thus far, we saw he just, uh, he has three more card points to spend, not going to pick that up. Beacon is going to pick up that Impact Hammer and max that out more than likely with three level 2 strikes, so his next card level he'll get two more strikes, because he should have four points in total after that. And that gives uh, Twin Blast, his, his range, Ranger's Twin Blast comes online a little bit earlier than that of your Murdochs and your Sparrows, because his ultimate is so devastating sitting in team fights, and he just scales a little bit better into the early parts of the match as well. He's also more mobile. He has his right-click ability, that rocket jump that we see, uh, and that can he can use that aggressively or get himself at a poor situation. So I like this itemization coming out here from Beacon's Murdoch. It puts a little more emphasis early on so that Twin Blast is going to be a uh, definitely a weapon to be reckoned with once these engagements do start, uh, do start coming down. Does look like Sir Static is back on that tower, guys. He is going to get that tier 1 tower down in the, uh, the right lane. Pretty much You're uncontested. Right. He can see and where mid -lane. the other team is. Uh, uh, mid lane went down as well. Team is. It mean, uh, uh, Ritsu, true and true, they were able to get that mid lane down. Yeah. So it was an exchange here. Uh, but he knew he was uncontested, so he just continued to push that lane down uh, because true and true, Chip and Ritsu were all mid lane. So a mid tower for the right tower. I think, honestly, at this stage of the game, the mid tower, we talked about it every time, how it opens up the options for you to invade the enemy jungle. I think the mid tower going down is a little bit. Uh, better of an exchange right there, but uh, with the right tower going down, that's not going to be the side where the orb prime is going to be turned in. It's because the orb prime is on the right side of the map. So I think out of all the towers to lose, you're going to be like, we'll give up a right tower for mid tower right there. It's definitely much more influential to get that down. I got a question for you because we're not seeing the combat right now. What do you think of triangle formation um, not taking energy, not having a hero that deals energy damage? Um, you're, you're making it so that the enemy team, uh, Baylife doesn't really have to worry about building yeah. uh, energy damage. They can focus strictly on building that physical damage. Do you feel like that could be a misstep in their part, or it's just they're comfortable with their play style and they know the damage they can deal? I mean, when you see that Murdoch band out, that's something that these teams took into account. They, they accounted for that. They're like, hey, if we don't pick up a Gideon or a Howitzer or something like that, we're not going to have energy damage, so our damage is going to be able to counter. Well, they, they know going into this that that was going to be the case. So I feel like that, yes, that Baylife can be opportunistic and jump on that, knowing that they can mitigate almost the entire damage type. 
But at the same time, I feel like that Triangle Formation is aware of that, and they probably have something in their pocket in a way of dealing with that, or at least they know how to work around it. But that's a very good point, Notch. That's actually something I didn't think about. I mean, taking a look at the itemization right now for Baylife, we do see that Bright Steel Plate I talked about, and he is. He's going to that Greater Guard right away, so they're already uh, starting to build in a capacity that takes advantage of it. We see the Tempered Plate on Gideon as well. Uh, so yeah, you made the call. Tempered plate on the Muriel. Uh, it definitely seems to be the case. They're starting to build physical damage mitigation, and that might really be the Achilles heel of Triangle Formation's draft. Still, a lot of roaming around, not much action going on. Uh, both of the Harvesters are in favor of uh, Triangle Formation right now. I'm sorry, no. In uh, Baylife right now, again, the minimap colors being switched up. Continues to confuse me, but yes, they, uh, Baylife has in full control of both of those lateral harvesters. Taking a look at what they've done thus far, we actually can't see the harvester, I didn't realize that, that's unfortunate, but the card power, pretty much even across the board, just has been no kills, nine minutes in. I think this is almost the longest we've gone without seeing a first blood. Yeah, this is, uh, nine minutes into the game, no first kills, like, that. that is not especially from triangle formation we've seen triangle formation tri tri triangle formation uh, play very aggressively they beacon true and true and saw tried to get thurborn over here but thurborn was able to jump the gap uh, and rocket boost away um which it's it's again triangle formation has played so aggressive early on yeah. this is very different to see from this this team uh my little stick sir Sadek, are able to push this mid tower here uh yeah. giant chip going to jump in and try and defend he is clearing out this minion wave um, so they don't have the protection of the minions, but it looks like these guys will end up getting this now. Can they catch up with them? Sir Static is getting pursued. Giant ship's jumping forward, but looks like the boulder on the beacon. He is caught out. So blast caught out out there. Does he have the rocket dash? Here comes the first barrel lock of the game. It's gonna knock him up, tossing around. Here comes the uh, thirdborn, laying it down onto Selwalk. Does he have as that right click? He is. He reaping dashes away, keeps himself alive. Giant ships in the front line, but Selwalk they're pursuing him down. Isu's gonna drop in the barrel. Although can they be the turnaround here? The shield is gonna build damage into Selwalk. They have to make sure that they don't overextend here and get taken out. Right now, no for no exchange. Selwalk is not a factor in this team fight though. And we do see Beacon in the back line just doing an enormous amount of damage to Mr. Your little stick. He's gonna get away. He's gonna reaping dash away. The boulder is gonna hit Isu. He doesn't have a uh, his ultimate. It is down, but a, a lot of blows exchanged there. None of them get knocked to the floor. So uh, that was uh, that right there was just shows how much respect these teams have for each other. It looked like there were opportunities on both sides for kills to be taken, but both these teams playing so very well. No one goes down. The game continues zero to zero. Really good, uh, Mario ultimates. There definitely keeping both yeah. teams alive she is so strong That's huge um you know there was no death strictly because of muriel ultimate and, and bubbles there um there was good rotation on the part of teams making sure that low you know, heroes with low health were rotated to the back and they were being the damage is being soaked up by chipperl uh, as he is uh gigantic on rampage but yeah. uh, very good alts and, and bubbles for both muriels there so yeah, Selwonk, I thought Selwonk was going to be going down there. That was the uh, the patience being displayed there by Ritsukai's Muriel was incredible. And one thing to take into account here, the passive of uh, of Finn Mao, which is called his balance of power, I believe is what it's called. When a shield is on a Finn Mao, when, when damage is being taken on a shielded Finn Mao, the Fenmel's damage actually ramps up. And that includes not only his his own shield, his right-click ability called the Conversion Shield, but the Muriel Shield as well. That means that if you can keep a shield consistently on Fen Mao and you're focusing damage into Fen Mao, he actually can turn around and kind of rubber band snap back in your face. He'll bend, he'll bend, he'll bend, and all of a sudden he'll just start doing massive amounts of damage. That's something that I was afraid was going to happen. We do see another Muriel ult going down here, knock him up. We do see the barrage right there from Twin Blast, focus down true on true, but she's just going to stand her ground. Secondary Muriel ult going on to Isu in the back line, and that knocks up just the uh, just the Muriel of Baylife right now, so Isu's really far forward. He's got to make sure that he doesn't get too far forward here. So here comes the barrage right now, and yeah, Murdoch, I'm sorry, not Murdoch, Muriel completely out by herself here. The rest of the team, Baylife, miscommunication there. They were separated. Some of their team was focusing down the tower. The rest of the team was on the other side of the tower. So uh, Triangle Formation jumped on the opportunity. We saw the uh, big barrage coming down from Beacon's Twin Blast. They secured the kill onto Muriel and uh, continuing to uh, get themselves, or not continuing, but finally we see the first takedown of the match on the Muriel. First blood goes the way of Triangle Formation. Very good engagement there. They were they, they didn't get the tower, but they did get that kill. And Muriel off the map is so huge. Yeah. Uh, picked up the extra. It looks like, unfortunately, though, uh, Muriel died pretty far back line. So yeah. there is no... Uh, they didn't actually get the experience from that kill, which is a little bit uh, unfortunate. But again, they got the kill. They took her off the map. They were able to make sure they te their team stayed alive uh, and continue to push out these lanes a little bit. 
Let's take a look at the itemization, because we talked about it before, the physical damage mitigation. Is that going to continue to be the case here? We did see that Solus Reactor picked up. This is a very good early game item for you Gideon players. That Solus Reactor gives him a little bit of mana regen in the early parts of the game. Just really umps his sustain in lane, as obviously he's great at pushing down waves, so on and so forth. Building into that Shadow Scroll, so that's also a great item as well. Gideon's passive does grant him some energy penetra penetration, but it doesn't scale. So getting that just gives you not only energy damage, but if the enemy team decides to build in an energy mitigation, you already have that set up right there. But the uh, only one Greater Guard in the Bright Steel Plate, uh, it looks like that My Little Stick isn't quite as farmed as I was expecting here. He is holding on to three card points. Is he going to continue to put upgrades in a Greater Guard, or is he going to maybe start going to Crit Chance? Or if they go all in on this physical damage mitigation, they'll be very, very tanky, but they themselves have to do damage as well, Notch. Yeah, that's and that's that could be the, the downfall here. Do, do they focus too much on trying to negate the damage uh, and don't card properly to make sure they, they deal damage? Uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see as the, as the game goes on, but... Yeah. Um, they're building, they're building to negate damage early game. That's probably why we haven't seen as many deaths, because they're able to take a, a couple hits uh, because they're not dealing as much damage as they would. We did see a little bit of pressure in this left lane here, but immediately them falling back. Both of the uh, uh, the left Harvester finally was taken out here. Uh, Isu, it looks like he's going to be able to pick it back up for Baylife, so... They didn't have that Harvester for a small period of time. They still have maintained control of those side Harvesters. The Harvester by the Orb Prime as well is in control of Baylife. So not only are they getting the card experience and the level experience from that Harvester, but also, more importantly, the vision that is granted over the Orb Prime. We see True and True was walking over there. He's putting the ward down. Again, a lot of emphasis on making sure that you have constant vision over this Orb Prime. These teams have probably been uh, fool fooled many times by the Orb Prime strategy, but they're not going to allow that to happen in this high-level play right here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all week, all week long, vision, vision, vision. Uh, it looks like um, because the teams are mixed up for me. I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like the Sir Sadic, uh Baylife has better vision in the jungle currently yeah. than Triangle Formation, so they are going to need to start getting some um, wards down. But they're still in a good position. They have some main points picked up, so they're not going to be able to get flanked on. Uh, but they definitely need to get some sight. Look what look what Baylife is doing here. I love it. They're pressuring myth left lane. Muriel is on the right lane, spill pushing. We're going to see Isu jump in here, more than likely to siege this tower. The moment Isu's in trouble, there's going to be a Muriel ult. He's in a rage, but they got to do it right now. There's the, There it is. Muriel ult coming in actually on a Sir Static. Is this going to be a huge black hole? That's what I was talking about. Momentous Third Bone sitting there with a black hole, keeping him in place, barraging him down. Beacon's trying to get a counter kill with his ultimate as well. Here comes the Muriel of Triangle Formation. They're trying to keep him alive. Isu's very low. He's taking up the tower. He needs to get away right now. He's going to go down. He does go down. No front line here for Baylife. Life. They have to back up. This may have been a botched team fight for him. It looks like it's gonna be. That looks so huge right there for, for Baylife. They got the mural all into the black hole, into the barrage from Twin Blast, but they couldn't line him up. They did it underneath the tower. Boas is in trouble, and this may be a full five man team wipe. It is. Baylife, I'm sorry, Triangle Formation is gonna get the full handful, all five. That just busted this game open. This tower is gonna be under siege. Wow. I thought Baylife had that right there, Notch. I, th I thought for so as well, but that ultimate from from Triangle Formations Muriel came in and saved the day. Uh, I it looked like I, I feel like they they should have uh, uh, Baylife should have altered Isu the rampage to keep him up just a little uh, bit longer. That's what I was thinking was going to happen. I, I um, agree. I wonder if that was a misclick on their part because it could have been. It, it, it just made more sense to keep Risu, uh, Isu alive, allow allow him to take more damage from the towers, and then. Uh, um, Gideon jump in and alt, uh, but amazing play from Triangle Formation. They capitalized on what I'm going to call a mistake. I'm unsure of it this time, but they capitalized on it. They got a full five-man wipe. They were able to take a tier one tower. They've now picked up the black buff, and are they going to try and push more here? I, I would imagine that's what they're going to do with that black buff. I don't think they're... That's, that's generally why you pick that up right there, and taking a look at this, they are going to recall, so they got the black buff, maybe being a little bit more... Uh, just uh, cerebral here in their decision making, not just kind of haphazardly going into a lane. After that team fight, look at the card level difference here. We see uh, that the be beacon and true on true up to card level 10, because 10 divided by 3. I'm sorry, 30 divided by 10 is 3. We are good mathematicians here on Agora's Rising. And that is a 2 to 3 level card lead, sometimes even 4 or 5. Isu is really under-farmed here, Notch, and that's going to be a really big problem. An under-farmed Rampage could absolutely be exploited and taken down early on. If Rampage isn't tanky enough to disrupt the backline, then he's not going to be a factor in these team fights, and uh, Triangle Formation can just absolutely just abuse that. 
They are going to go into the Orb Prime here, but they saw the ward there. I think they're going to go for this anyways. They know they have a huge advantage. They have and, the advantage. Yeah. As we've seen time and time again, these guys love this Prime Orb. It has set them up for some incredible engagements. Uh, they are going to engage. My Little Stick looks like he may be rotating. Boaz looks like he may be, be rotating over. Uh, but in favor right now of Triangle Formation due to the card lead. Isu is jumping in on this fight. He did get a stun off on Untrue Untrue, but he's yeah. just, he's down. It's it's 5v1 right now. Yeah. Uh, unless we get this Muriel ult, he is going to go down. They're looking for it. Did he actually get the orb, though? Cell, I don't Wonk, think... Cell Wonk has the orb currently. Okay, uh, so. Yeah, so Cell, it, uh, orb is in favor of, of Triangle Formation. Yeah. Giant Chip Roll is trying to chase down Isu. It does look like they'll escape, though. So they didn't lose anybody. They did lose the Prime Orb. It, we may see this rotation from Cell Wonk. Uh, probably going to give it to Rampage, what I would expect. And he does. He drops it off and hands it to Giant Chip Roll. That's the way to go right there with that tower being taken out uh, in the left lane. That means they do have several avenues to go down with that. The more open avenue in the lane itself or traverse the narrow choke points of the jungle. It really comes down to what they want to do here. Or again, are they going to use it as a tool to force the uh, opponent here of Baylife to spread themselves out a little bit too thin over the map? I think Baylife, they've been in this situation a time or two. They know the appropriate response to it. And uh, the lead is definitely substantial here for Triangle Formation, but it's not so substantial that they can be reckless here. They still have to be calculated. They have to be careful. We saw last time uh, with uh, Triangle or with Baylife versus Kill on Sight. Kill on Sight got a little ahead of themselves and actually ended up giving away and throwing away an Orb Prime uh, at right around the turn in. So it looks like the push is going to continue here. Everyone from Triangle Formation is coming down the pipeline. Muriel's on the other side of the map, but that's what you want to do. You want to see a split pushing Muriel because she can ult into that team fight at a moment's notice. If you take a look at the Fenmo, if you take a look at my little stick, he's setting himself up here. Maybe for a flank, True and True is going to get initiated on. Issue's going in there as well. There's going to be a lot of trouble here. Black Hole's keeping him up. The Earth Shatter's there, but the Muriel ult's going to come in just in time. That is the turnaround, and that's why Muriel's so strong. Kept True and True in live. The initiation onto the Sparrow wasn't enough, and I think that Tr B Baylife might get turned it around there. The Fenmo was. Get, did get taken out here, so yeah, they just went a little bit too hard in their notch. They got a little eager. Beacon's actually by himself, though. He is going to get taken out. It is a one for two, but again, the Rampage disconnected from the rest of his team is going to open up the rest of his team to get walked over, and that's exactly what's going to happen. We see it time and time again where Rampages, their eyes get bigger than the stomach. They lose uh, sight on what their job is, and that's to protect their backline, and the enemy team takes advantage of that. This and this time, being the triangle formation, they able to get a kill on the mural that otherwise they probably wouldn't have been able to if the Rampage was there. And that means a tier two tower and an orb prime being turned in. Yeah, I mean, it, just jumping back line like that, you're definitely leaving your team uh, vulnerable, and that's what we saw due to the lack of, of protection for his front line. I mean, yes, you got the 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 beacon kill, but what what advantage was that? Did he? Yeah, it, it, it's it's just a misplay, I believe. Yeah, uh, on Isu's part. Hopefully, we we he can get that together because it definitely definitely hindered that team fight there it did and now we see triangle formation this is this is the uh, triangle formation that we uh, we like to see here and that's when they start grouping up and they go in inside the jungle and they start taking map control they have that orb pride buff for a matter of a couple more minutes here let's take a look at the items here notch and see what's going on here specifically on the fen mal selwong's fen mal he did go with that offensive maneuvers uh, usually it's between the offensive maneuvers or the bright steel plate. Obviously these two Finmal players have a little bit of a stylistic difference between them, but it's about that blade of Agora, maxing it out, getting the crit bonus, going into crit. That's a 40% ch crit chance right there on the Spear of the Rift Hunter with those three major wounds built into it. And now he's starting to go build into his fourth item right there, Brand of the Iron Eater, which is some lifesteal. So he's getting some drain out of it, and that's generally what you see. Generally, when you see lifesteal, there's two factors you gotta see. A is the team ahead, and which item is this? If you're ahead and it's your fourth or fifth item, Item, life steal is ideal. So Cell Wonk's Fen Mao is gonna be really a big threat to deal with here. As when Fen Mao gets ahead, he can be a little bit snowbally at times, Notch. Uh, he absolutely can. Um, I, what, what do you think the next step here is for these guys? Do you do you feel like Triangle Formation? They're definitely. Do they need to play more defensively? Are they gonna try and pick out, pick up a a. Um, a gank, or do you think they're just gonna to hang back, trying to defend their power towers and play play defensively? Uh, when it comes to, you said for Baylife? Yeah, for Baylife. I think Baylife, they they could go either way, but they know that they're behind. 
So they have to, they aren't the ones dictating the flow of this match right now. They don't have the momentum. I feel like if they do get over aggressive, that they will get trounced on and they'll get punished for it because they are behind. And this is what I'm talking about. Sir Static can push forward already. Just two hits takes a lot of damage. Giant Trip was around, but thankfully Ice who was in place to protect the Gideon there. They are gonna back him away, and that's what I was talking about. The moment that that lane was pushed out and they got aggressive on the map, look what happens. They get punished immediately by Triangle Formation. Gideon almost got taken out there. There is no more Orb Prime, but that I really. I feel like that Baylife still has the advantage when it comes to levels. They still have the advantage when it comes to card experience here. Are we going to see Giant Ship jumping in here? We've seen it time and time again. The last time it was Baylife jumping in, it didn't work out for him. They got to be careful. There's the boulder. He doesn't have an ultimate notch, but can he get away? If they can get Giant Ship right here, it'll be huge. He's going to throw the boulder. He's going to jump away. Is Isu going to pursue? Doesn't look like they're going to. Nonetheless, the second time, both of these teams have dived in towers. Both times it hasn't worked out very well for him, and that is what Baylife needed. Fighter 3 is going to get away right now. That's actually looking pretty good for Baylife. We talked about how every single time one of these teams has dived under a tower, it hasn't worked out for them. And that's just, this is exactly what Baylife needed. True on True is going to take try to take out My Little Stick. No, that is not what they needed. My Little Stick overextends, but they are going to get True for True. This is a one for three exchange. Still favorable for Baylife right now. Giant Ship, does he have a leap? He did. We know he doesn't have an ultimate notch, but can he get away? If they can get Giant Ship right here, it'll be huge. He's going to throw the boulder. He's going to jump away. Is Isu going to pursue? Doesn't look like they're going to. To. Nonetheless, the second time both of these teams have dived in towers, both times it hasn't worked out very well for them, and that is what Baylife needed, Josh. They, it was 100%. They got, they hopefully, uh, my tab screen is a little bit bugged, but picking up that card experience from those kills, uh, I mean, Triangle Formation has just been so dominant. That fight saving the tier one, it's exactly what we saw on the other side of the map a few moments ago. This will give them a, a nice boost in card experience, make them hopefully boost their confidence a little bit. Hey guys, we can take a fight off of these guys, just keep it up, yeah. and we can push back. That black hole, I, I thought Sir Sadek was dead to rights there, man. He was just taking damage, taking damage, but the shield from Muriel there was just so very clutch. Judging by the fact that Sir Sadek hasn't picked up a Shockwave, leads me to believe that either he's saving it, or he simply doesn't have it in his deck, because it's such a... Oh, and there it is. Literally just bought it right there. So now the impact coming out from this Gideon is going to be even more. The Gideon play from Sir Sadek has been very impressive, Notch. I, his black holes have been huge. Been They've been timed perfectly. He's not just going in there kind of uh, haphazardly or recklessly. He's been very calculated with the black holes. He's always getting a lot of value out of them. If he continues to do that now, that he, especially that he has that Shockwave, we might see this game start leaning over swinging that pendulum in favor towards Baylife with that being said the uh, card power still well the, the card power advantage is still well in the hands of triangle formation right now yeah that but that that shockwave is such a good card it is man uh, and as well if they've been able to combo their alts like we just saw there uh, giving them another stun uh, it's just going to keep them in in the black hole for much longer and hopefully secure some of those kills. My little stick is actually caught yeah. out over here. Giant Triple and True and True on top of him. Uh, we do have the Muriel Arc coming in. True and True's pop her ultimate as well. They're taking a lot of damage. Um, my, yeah, I they got to be careful. Ritsu Kai, he used his ult a little bit early there. True and True's in part of a bad spot. Isu forcing out the enrage. Sir Sadek actually uncharacteristically. Black hole goes off. Beacon, or Thirdborn's using them. This is a little bit of a cluster here with two fights going on at the same time. Transitioning over here to the other side of the field, we do see that the Fen Mao was taken out right there. So it looks like that uh, My Little Stick, who was the one who was caught out originally, did get punished for it. True on true, might be in some trouble. Isu Light of the Boulder is going to have to drop it. But they get Thirdborn right there. But th this might be an exchange. Mirror is here, though. Ritsu Kai is going to keep True on true alive. Going to get turned around on Isu. Loess over here to the north, though, is in a little bit of trouble. The Muriel, though, she's a Muriel. She should be able to get away. A three for nil exchange favoring triangle formation right there are all on the heels of catching out my little stick right there. Yeah, it, really good rotation from uh, Selwonk and, and uh, the, the the triangle tr formation team. It's given them the opportunity to do what they love to do, and this is take this purple gummy bear. Um, this is going to give an orb prime if they can get a turn in. Uh, and it, that card advantage that, that Baylife was working on, they just lost it with those needless deaths. Yeah, and this is going to be another Orb Prime going over to Triangle Formation. And uh, they, they're continuing to... Triangle Formation is just coming out ahead right now. Baylife has had a couple of team fights that were looking good, but they can't... They It seems like they always seem to overextend 
or get a little bit of reckless. These team fights it, uh, have always just been like two different fights going on at the same time. It really hasn't been a big 5v5 with the Rampage just trying to get in the backline, so on and so forth. Or when it is a 5v5, one team is diving underneath another team's tower and they get punished for it here. But this Orb Prime at this stage of the game, left inhibitor for Baylife is susceptible to being pushed down. So I feel like if Triangle Formation is able to take a decisive team fight on the left part of the map, get the Orb Prime turned in, in whichever order, turn it in, take a team fight, take a team fight, turn it in. That left inhibitor is already vulnerable. They could take down that left inhibitor and put themselves in a premier spot to take this game number one. But again, they have to be calculated with it. The last time they dived recklessly, they got punished for it. We know Baylife knows how to punish Triangle Formation. It all comes down to Triangle Formation, not putting them in a position to where they can get punished. Yeah, you, you see Triangle Formation, I'm sorry, Baylife is putting down uh, wards to make sure they have all sight. They can currently see uh, Chip, who has the uh, the orb on him because he's got yep. that, that purple target. Um, but they're, they're making sure they're not going to be flanked. Uh, we do have Muriel, of course, in the other lane trying to push out, push out lanes because she can just alt in. Um, uh, Triangle Formation taking their time here. They're just yep. going to push out their wave here. They're going to play this very smart. They're going to let the other teams, uh, their, their other team rotate to them, and, and they're going to try and engage this uh, 5v5 again. Uh, Muriel can just alt in and save the day if she needs to. Yeah, I, I think the Orb Prime is going to get turned in here, but it's a matter of how much does Chip, how much is, folks get, is Chip going to get focused to get it turned in? He pops the ult, they know they're going to get turned in. Wow, look what happened though! Good lord, with no rampage, they went in and just blew him up. There's a shockwave, there's the mirror ult, so much damage again. Ritsukai is getting taken up by this black hole. This black hole is just sucking them in. They're getting spaghettification is the scientific term for that right there, Notch. The astrophysicists in the crowd are going wild right now for that. But right now it's a three for nil. And it's triangle formation again are looking to get themselves in prime position to push down this inhibitor. Isu goes down, and originally the prounce on to triangle formation was there. They said, you know what? We know giant chip is going to turn in the orb. The moment chip went in, they jumped under the rest of triangle formation, but they were ready for it. That black hole looked so amazing. Again, the team fight somehow, I don't know how, triangle formation is surviving through these great initiations. They survived the black hole. This inhibitor is absolutely going to be going down notch. We, we know how they stay alive. It is the, there's a reason Muriel has been banned. We see what she can do on down. Yeah. She was able to come in and save the day. The the shockwave, use of shockwave, the the ultimate for Muriel kept them alive. It was a great try by um, Baylife there, trying to yeah. jump that back line. They knew exactly what Chip was going to do, like you said. They tried to make that play work, but Ritsukai's uh, ultimate was it. just clutch. It, it was looked, so clutch, it was. and it saved his team. That That is the strength of Muriel, ladies and gentlemen. That's why she has upwards of a 90% ban rate in the tournament today. I believe it may be a little less now that we've seen her in play twice today, but uh, she had upwards of like an 85 to 90 percent ban rates. Yeah. And as of as of the first set of games, she was at 87 yeah. percent ban rate, and and we see why she is so strong and she's able. That, what's the name of the ultimate? Reversal of fortune. Reversal of fortune. Nailed it. As you can tell, that, there's a reason an, they've called yes, it that. Yes, it's it's an it's an apt name for it. Definitely fits right there. Taking a look at the itemization, we talked about that physical mitigation that uh, Baylife can do to take advantage of the fact that B uh, Triangle Formation is nothing but physical damage, and they've really kind of spilled into it. That's a, I mean, look at the uh, Isu's Rampage right now. He's got 260 physical right there. He's got another 198 right there, uh, and he's so that's quite a bit of physical damage mitigation, but uh, I feel like it hasn't been enough, man, even with that. Because if you start looking at the itemization and the upgrades coming here from Triangle Formation, we do see they are going into starting to pierce that Stone Tooth Heart, Stone Tooth Heart for True and True, putting in the pierces in there. That's 128 pierce right there. So that is going to negate a good majority of the damage mitigation that uh, Baylife has built into, as well as Beacon. I believe he's gone into some penetration as well. Not quite yet. He's not doing any, but uh, still. The, the Pierce right there from Sparrow, we talked about it. That's exactly what they needed to do. Get some Pierce on their Sparrow, and she's still going to be doing, despite the fact that Baylife is building into that damage mitigation, Sparrow still is very, very impactful. Her late-game presence is one of the better. She does... Uh, one of the some of the most damage in the game right now. Once she does start getting hit in level thirteen, level fourteen, and start getting her third or fourth item. Uh, this is such a this is such a tough uh, tough game for for Baylife right here. They are on the back foot, guys. Um, we see Giant Chipperl and, and and Triangle Formation pushing up this tier two tower, yep. uh, and it, they're they're going for another inhibitor. They've got Twin Blast is currently defending the. Uh, 
if we're looking orange side, the left lane, he has recalled and he's going to come back and try and defend this inhibitor, but with Chip Rolls all up, it will be able to get this inhibitor down, no problem. Shockwave does go down, but immediately the Gideon just gets turned on. True on true, a three or four shot right there. Gideon in the late game just being a complete non-factor. Thurborn's going to get taken out as well. This might just be the game. We see the Desperation Muriel ult. Ritsu's sitting there waiting to drop a Muriel ult for himself as well. Isu's in a little bit of trouble. He's getting completely focused down right now. He's going to get taken out. That is a three for nil exchange. This might just be the game. It more than likely will be. We've seen this time and time again. Notch the inhibitors down. They're going to go in there on the core. And this is more than likely going to be game number one. Going to triangle formation. The la it just came down to those last two team fights, man. That last team fight granted them the Orb Prime, and then that most recent team fight with the Orb Prime, they just had too much strength. They dived the inhibitor. They took them out just without any sort of resistance. Game number one goes to them. Yeah, and it was a it was a incredible gameplay from both teams. We saw both times where Muriel can her ultimate can save the day. Uh, early on, it was in favor of Baylife, and then the exact same thing. Um, that you know, Baylife dove the tower, and Triangle Formation was able to jump in and get the save. Triangle Formation then tried to dive a tier one tower, and yeah. Baylife's Muriel was able to come in and do the exact same thing. Muriel is just so strong. That last team fight at the Orb Prime there uh, is really what won the game for Triangle Formation. Muriel was able to come in, save her team, allow the Orb Huge. Prime to be caught. They were able to take an inhibitor, just rotate to the other lane, uh, and it really put um, Baylife on the defensive and and uh, triangle formation uh, capitalized and they they took the game uh pretty easily actually that last couple of minutes there so guys we're gonna get to game number two for the finals of agora's rising at number one uh, there is some money up for grabs here we don't know how much because the match arena is still going on and that's a beautiful time to talk about it using the code word agora you guys can uh for free at a dollar to the prize pool for these teams that are showing that are uh fighting their heart out right now and have for the better part of uh, i believe six to seven hours yesterday and another good three to four hours today depending on how these games go if we go to a game number three i think we absolutely could be going to a game number three notch bay life didn't that was not not a one-sided game it just came down to a couple botched team fights at the end there if Baylife were able to maybe uh, shape up a little bit huddle together call the plays a little bit more they definitely could take a game off a of triangle formation but we'll see we got to get into game number two to see that prediction notch uh, we absolutely do. Do you think we'll see a Muriel ban? I personally think we'll see a Muriel ban. I, I feel like what they did there was a respect ban for Giant Chip Rolls steel play. Yeah. They, instead of instead of uh, banning that Muriel, they thought, you know what, we will be able to deal with the Muriel. Let's get Chip Roll off of steel because his steel play has been on point this entire tournament. Yeah. Let's see if he can play another hero. He obviously showed he has no issues playing another tank, uh, and Muriel is just too strong at this yeah. point. All right, guys, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. And if you want, guys want to see the statistics of all the games and all the replays and everything like that, make sure you check out Fury.gg. You can check your own ELO, your own win rate, and everything like that as well. So that get, during the downtime, you can uh, go back there and see how you're doing inside of Agora. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment with game number two for the finals between Triangle Formation and Baylife. 